David, do you want cholesterol drugs or do you want dementia? <laughs> you can take your topic. I don't care. No, I, I don't. I, I, I took anatomy. Okay, you took, you I, took I, you know, protein. Like horses, lions. No, no, no. Well, I, I'll take I dementia because yeah. I'm speaking about cholesterol drugs tomorrow. But, um, but do I want cholesterol drugs or dementia? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you for asking. I wanted you to read into it what you wanted to read into it. Um, can you prevent dementia was basically the question. Um, yeah, and I'm not a neurologist, but one has to be familiar, well-read, and we are all concerned about our, our memory and where we left our car in the parking lot. Um, there was a splash about three, four years ago, uh, a scientist uh, out of the Buck Institute in San Francisco, and then a book called The End of Alzheimer's that was embraced very quickly by the functional medicine community, of which I'm a member, but I don't agree eye to eye with all. The idea that there are 36 holes in the roof of your house if you're starting to lose your memory, that's the analogy. And you can plug each and every one of them, some with fitness, some with diet that favors a ketogenic diet in this approach. And a whole lot of supplements from uh, Hooperzine to Vinpositin and on and on. Um, it quickly became a franchise, and the author of the book uh, profited quite nicely. He did publish a scientific paper, but it's not Alzheimer's. It's at best something called MCI, mild cognitive impairment, that may progress on, but may not progress on to the clinical diagnosis of Alzheimer's. Nine of ten patients showed some improvement. Uh, and then there was a business, and there hasn't been much follow-up publication. A number of my friends in the Detroit community did train in this kind of franchise of brain health. They basically have all abandoned it. It was very expensive for patients. It was very complex. And there really hasn't been a good foundation to show that it actually prevented Alzheimer's. On the other hand, within a few months out came the Scherzai's uh, Alzheimer's Solution. You may have known that book. I think it's a wonderful book with the neuro program of nutrition and exercise and uh, optimized mind-body and other uh, features there, some mind games. But they certainly do not claim that they prevent dementia. In fact, most reasonable scientists don't believe at this point we actually know that anybody can prevent it. There is an inherited uh, risk called APOE. I have a practice full of people who've inherited a rather adverse APOE44 that 20 years earlier in life than on average, you may start to have some memory issues. And there seems to be an advantage to a low saturated fat diet, which is perhaps our community and uh, lower alcohol consumption. But these are trends. We don't really know that all for sure. Um, you know, the general trend is that a lot of cognitive impairment is cardiovascular impairment. It's microcirculation. It's vascular dementia. And certainly the theme out of the Chicago Healthy Aging Project and other uh, is that optimal blood pressure, optimal blood sugar, optimal blood cholesterol, regular fitness, good sleep, avoidance of smoking, uh, and I would say embracing a whole food diet, largely of plants, would be wise, but I think there's science to come before we say we, you know, have certainly beat down Alzheimer's. I don't think anybody really claims that yet. I'll say just tying in the question we didn't do, the general data is statins don't cause Alzheimer's. If anything, they're neutral and may have a slight advantage if your cholesterol is 300 and there's no other mechanism to bring it down. Uh, the latest meta-analysis are fairly you know, uh, reassuring. Okay, I'm gonna ask six more questions. Um, in this case, Steve? yes, yes. Um, Joel, how much uh, glucose dysregulation have you seen with statins? Because I, I've seen a fair, a fair amount in, in clinic. Yeah. So there's a you know, good question, and there is um, no direct understanding why there's been an observation. Uh, it may be a mitochondrial toxin is the common statement, whether simvastatin is the most uh, glycemic of statins, it used to be called Zocor, and some of the others are more favorable, as mentioned, whether coenzyme Q10, at least in one lab study, uh, protected 
the mitochondria and this response has been mentioned, but there's very little data on it actually. I mean, there's the databases that suggest if you're a healthy person and you're placed in a statin, the likelihood you're gonna see a major shift in your insulin sensitivity and actually develop diabetes is very low. But if your hemoglobin A1C is 6.2 and your waistline is 43 inches and your diet is not optimal, it may push you uh, a couple points up on measures and you will fulfill criteria of type 2 diabetes. Um, offset by what I'll talk about tomorrow, at least some data to suggest it prevents the number one killer of men and women in high risk subsets like previous heart attacks and post bypass and such. In my own clinic, I'm concerned. I'm not a aggressive statin user, but they need to be pulled out now and then. Um, and I have stopped people's statins and you always can for a couple months repeat the hemoglobin A1C. It wanders down, I won't say it's, you know, amazingly potent intervention to stop and reassess, but I will and, and uh, you know, very often three, four times a week reintroduce it and you get pretty adequate balance between cardiovascular risk reduction and not elevating the blood sugar. I think it's a real deal though.